We are live on the scene tonight of yet another officer-involved shooting. That man has been identified as LAPD officer Brian Stanley. Our neighbor? Our neighbor. And now we wait for him to be exonerated. So what does one do, Vanessa? We gotta take a stand. You're going to come over to our house. I'm going to talk and you're going to listen. You're watching Black Tree on TV. This was such an interesting movie because when it started off, I didn't know where it was going. Our first uh, interaction on the couch after watching the clip, just I was like, where is this movie about to go? I, I was so intrigued from the from the first, uh, first act. So uh, you guys really pulled it off. First, like, how does it feel for this movie? Because I know y'all shot it a while ago to come out in this in this period where not only is it Black History Month and we're talking about, you know, who we are as the people here in America, but the, the recent deaths of, of other Black uh, people by the hands of police have raised an eyebrow on this uh, topic of police brutality. Like, how does it feel to just to be part of the conversation with a piece of art like this. Yeah, so, I mean, it's kind of tragic, I think, that we are a piece of that conversation, that a movie like this, that the source material, is there's a wealth of source material for a movie like this, where we see this couple uh, watch during that evening of, of news, um, and that we just so happen to be, you know, mourning the loss of, you know, the re most recent, public um i guess execution it uh it's terrible that it's timely you know because we shot this at the top of 2020 and then COVID happened and then we had even more uh of those things happen and unfortunately they'll continue to happen so i think it's it's kind of unfortunate but i think what we do have is the ability as artists to have an outlet to sort of allow people to synthesize how they feel and realize that we all don't feel the same way about everything. And I think this movie, A Lot of Nothing, it really does a good job attempting to um, distill that thought. Yeah. Cleo, yeah, okay. to, yes. Well, I was going to jump off of what Alan said. It, it, I think the tragedy of it is that it's never not topical. It's, it's, it's never not timely. This is not a new thing. Um, but as artists, it is it is wonderful to be able to reflect the times, whether they are good or bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Cleo, I, I, I really loved you and uh, White Famous and 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 some other projects you've done. Uh, but I, I wonder, as an Aussie, like um, when you look at stuff that happens, uh, I think it's called Bryson Bay, uh, and, and we look look here in America. I mean, are there are there a lot of similarities to the way that brown people, black people are treated uh, at the hands of authorities um, in the two places? Yes. Yes, I would say that um, the conditioning uh, that a lot of people hold towards black and brown people is based off of decisions made a long time ago and that conditioning has not gone away i'm from australia which is a colonized country this is you know there was a genocide very similar to 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 here with the indigenous population here um my family's from jamaica you know which means we're from west africa um so it's all related and uh living in america now um it's wonderful to be part of a community, I will say, as opposed to in Australia, where it's a lot more of an isolated experience as far as these themes. Um, but yes, it's a global thing. This right here, this is what you do. You create a necessity for chaos so that your projections can thrive. Yep. I've been seeing a therapist. What? And I've noticed some of your hour, hour patterns. 
you know, you get all worked up and then you get me there too. And then my feelings and my frustrations, they have to be yours or they're, they're not valid. What therapist and you, when? And you escalate everything until we're stuck in this, this counterproductive cycle. Until all that's left is my anxiety and, and my bitterness, babe. And, and Sheila, Sheila thinks that that's part of our code. Sheila. Penalty. And honestly, I'm, I'm starting to Of course think it's a Sheila. Don't say it, don't say it like that. Like what, like you're having a secret rendezvous with Sheila? That is not fair, and it's okay. Do not talk to me about fair. The Elon, you, you're, a, you're a Morehouse man. You started in Brooklyn like me, you raised in Stone Mountain. I was right over there in Decatur. So we okay. have a lot of similarities. Yeah. Um, how, how, how did this dream come upon you? I know there's been so many uh, famous people that in the, in the world of film and theater that came through Morehouse, and I know you went to Tish later, but how did this, this dream to, to start this acting career start? And um, like, can you just tell me, tell, tell the fans a little about that? Man, I almost shed a tear just now because he took me through my whole little situation with Morehouse. Well, I got to say, I, I didn't graduate from Morehouse. And interestingly enough, so I'm not a Morehouse man. I'm a man of Morehouse. They got this, some, some semantics there. But I had my sophomore year at Morehouse, I spoke to Spike Lee because I was interested in acting. And he was doing a new student orientation. So I, real quick, I spoke to him. And he told me, hey, he didn't even look at me when he said, he said, he said if you want to do some acting, go to NYU, do a, a semester abroad or domestic exchange. If you like it, stay. If you don't, come back. And I did. And I ended up loving it. I fell in love with it. It was like, for me, I, I'm an athlete, so I grew up. It, it was the closest thing to like being on the field with your brothers, you know, and going for try, trying to get to that specific goal. Um, and I, that's it. I'm still living that dream, trying to get to a specific goal. And, and my teammate happened to be Cleopatra and Mo and all of these people on this on this on this wonderful film that we did. And um, it just reminds me how blessed I am. So shout out to Brooklyn. Shout out to Morehouse, shout out to Tish, and uh, shout out to you, bro. Y'all, y'all first response was gonna be to post something on social media. And this question is for both of you. I'm, if if Malcolm X or Martin Luther King had social media, like, do you think that would have been like part of their their web their 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 tools that they would have been using would be post as opposed to I mean, what, what do you think about it? like that? I had a whole little thought about your first response. Like, yo, we're going to post something on Facebook. Like, how? Like, what do you think about social media activists as opposed to or, or with the thought of the activists from the past that just had to march to get that attention, had to be out there on the front lines? How do, what, what do you all think about that? Well, it's hard to know what an individual would do I mean, back then you'd write books, so maybe a modern day version would be to post online. I, it's hard to say, but I would say, uh, you know, a big part of activism is obviously raising awareness. Social media is a great tool for that, but I value conversations in person a lot more than that, and I think they can be a lot more useful, um, particularly opposing views. If you can have a conversation with someone, um, I think that's more valuable in some ways. Yeah. Love the film. Can't wait till the conversation start. Cleo, I was really mad at your character so many times in this film because I was like, you're going to get this brother killed. <laughs> but it, it was so many dynamics and so many twists and turns in the film that, I mean, uh, shout, out to, shout out to Mo and to David Oyelowo for, for making this happen because I, I, I thought it was very enjoyable and I love your performances. Oh, man. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you for your time.